All right, there in 1 Peter chapter 4, look at verse 12. It says, Beloved, think not it strange concerning the fiery trial which is to try you, as though some strange thing happened unto you, but rejoice, inasmuch as ye are partakers of Christ's suffering. Look what it says here. It says, as though some strange thing had happened unto you. What I want to talk about today is that there are strange things happening. And I'm not just talking about in the news. Sure, if you turn on the news, you're going to see some strange things. You're going to see some really weird things going on. I'm talking about in the churches, in the lives of born-again, Bible-believing Christians. There's some very strange things going on. The Bible says here it's a fiery trial. And he actually says that we, not, we shouldn't think of it as though some strange thing happened. We shouldn't take it as a surprise, like, whoa, what, what just happened here? We need to understand this fiery trial is coming. There are strange things that are going to happen in your life, and we need to be ready for them. And when it happens, it says in verse 13, rejoice. Rejoice. There are persecutions and afflictions coming to this church, to you personally, and you need to be ready for it. God has a plan for it. If you're truly saved, God wants you to go through trials for a purpose. He says, think it not strange. Don't be surprised when it happens. The trial of your faith is much more precious than gold. God wants your, your faith to be tried. He wants your life to be tried. He wants this church to be tried. God has a purpose for everything that's happening. You know, in Job 23, he says, But he knoweth the way that I take. When he hath tried me, I shall come forth as gold. What Job is saying is, I'm going through a rough time. The world is looking and they're scoffing. Ah, you must not be right with God. There must be some secret sin in your life. Something's obviously wrong with you, Job. And Job is saying, God knows the way that I take. God knows that I'm searching after righteousness. And you're going to find out that my faith is like gold. When we go through a suffering, God knows it. He allows it. He wants it to happen. But He wants you to overcome it. God has a plan through this. He wants to strengthen and temper you through it. Amen. You understand that God wants you to go through strange things for His glory? Christ suffered as an example for us. Amen. He wants you to follow in His footsteps, understanding you're going to go through a fiery trial. It's going to seem like a very strange thing as you're going through it, but God has a plan. And He wants you to strengthen your faith. It is your faith that is on trial. You think about that. It is your faith that's going to be tempered. Suffering isn't looking at the news saying, oh yeah, this country's going to hell. I mean, you can amen that, but that's not what the fight's about. It's not about looking at the political system. Although when you look at it through the Spirit, you see right away, whoa, the Antichrist is coming. Whoa, he's preparing his troops. Be ye holy, for I am holy. Jesus wants you to sacrifice the things in your life because you're going to go through trials. When you go through a difficult time, we should rejoice, as it said. This is a good thing. The Lord has, has deemed you sufficient to be able to handle it if you're going through it. When strange things happen, how do we respond? In Philippians 1, it says, in nothing terrified by your adversaries, which to them is an evident token of perdition, but unto you of salvation and that of God. For it is, for unto you it is given in the behalf of Christ, not only to believe on Him, but also to suffer for His sake. In Acts 5, when they beat the apostles, they beat Him and they command Him not to speak in the name of Jesus. It says they departed in the presence of the council, rejoicing that they were counted worthy to suffer shame for his name. Right? They're count wow, we suffered for God. So how did they respond when they were told not to speak in the name of Jesus? Well, you know, they, they took those controversial videos off YouTube and they stopped soul winning out in public. They just kept it a real secret thing, right? Is that what they did? No, absolutely not. In fact, their response was to get more on fire. They thanked God for that fiery trial. It says daily in the temple and in every house they cease not to teach and preach Jesus Christ. Not just in every house. They went to the temple. They went to the gates of hell. They went to the synagogue of Satan with the gospel of Jesus Christ to tell people they've been set free. Fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison. Nay, some of you, some of you, the devil will cast some of you in prison that ye may be tried that ye shall have tribulation ten days, be thou faithful unto death, and I will give thee a crown of life. When you're cast into trials and tribulations, will you come forth as gold? When this world, when the real persecution comes, will you be ready? 
The things that have been happening in the churches with infiltrators trying to split the church, and strange doctrines coming up, oneness. Hey, I believe in oneness, but I believe in threeness also. Amen. I believe in the Trinity. In the Bible it says that he made us kings and priests unto God and his Father. Amen. Did you know God has a Father? That's right, Jesus has a Father. Amen. The Bible's clear about that. God is getting, getting us ready right now to allow these trials and tribulations. He's getting us ready now through the little things, through the problems at work, through the problems with family. He's preparing us for bigger times that are coming. What are you willing to sacrifice to be a real soul winner, to be a fired up Christian? We, got, we have to get our priorities right, our perspective right. Will you be spiritually strong enough when the Antichrist reigns? When he steps up and says, I'm God? Now sure, you're, you probably won't be the first one out there. You're not gonna go take the mark of the beast. You've got the spirit in you. But will you be pulling the people, trying to pull them out of the fire as they're on their way to get that chip, to take that mark, to worship the beast? Will you follow them and, no, stop, what are you doing? You're condemning yourself. What are you willing to sacrifice to save souls? Because that's what we've been called to. Have you ever been in a situation where somebody asks you you're a Christian and you're not sure how to answer it? You're not sure whether you're going to say it? How about when they're cutting off people's heads because they won't worship the Antichrist as God? How's your testimony going to be then? Because here it says that they overcame them by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. Hey, they're killing people for not taking that chip. Are you going to? You better take it, right? You're going to take it. Your own family will probably give you a hard time. What are you going to do? Hey, settle it right now in your hearts.